In this video, I will show you how to use a solenoid with an Arduino. Unlike motors that provide rotational motion, solenoids provide linear or back and forth motion, so they are useful if you need to push or pull on something, or if you want linear actuation without needing an additional mechanism to convert the rotational motion of a motor to straight line back and forth motion. Let's start by taking a closer look at a solenoid. Now, a solenoid is really just an electromagnet with a movable core. So inside this yellow wrapper here, there is a coil of wire connected to these two external leads. When I connect these leads to power and send current through that wire, it generates a magnetic field and causes the core to move. There are different types of solenoids depending on how the core and coil are configured. There are push solenoids that will push out when you apply current. There are pull type solenoids that will pull in when you apply current. And this is a push-pull solenoid that also has a return spring. So when I apply current, this is going to push out. And then when I release the current, it is going to pull back. Solenoids that are only a single type, so only push type or only pull type, are going to require some external load or force to push them back to their default position when you remove current, otherwise they will just stay where they are. I should also note that these solenoids are not necessarily designed to be run continuously for long periods of time because they can get hot. You have a lot of current flowing through a very long coil that's all bundled up in there, which causes it to heat up, and since it is pretty compact, there is not really great heat dissipation. So you will need to check out the data sheet or the information for the solenoid that you purchase and see if it can be left on. And if not, if they have some maximum recommended time or duty cycle, so percentage of time it is on and percentage of time it is off to prevent overheating. If you just buy one and are testing it without really bothering to check any of that information, be careful when you go to touch it or pick it up after it has been on because you don't want to burn yourself if it has gotten hot. Next up, let's zoom in on the breadboard and take a look at the circuit. Now, to drive a solenoid with your Arduino, just like with a motor, you are going to need a part called a transistor, and that is required because solenoids and motors usually require more current than your Arduino pins can provide directly. So when you are just getting started with an Arduino, you are probably used to connecting LEDs directly to the I.O. pins, and that is because LEDs only require about 20 milliamps of current, and you can get that from an Arduino pin, at least on the Uno R3. On the newer Uno R4, you can only get about 8 milliamps, but that is still enough to visibly light up an LED. But you cannot get the hundreds of milliamps that you need for even a small motor or solenoid. So what the transistor allows you to do is control the flow of current through your load, your motor or solenoid, from an external power supply. In this case, I have two wires coming off the top of the breadboard here that go to an external 12 volt power supply because this is a 12 volt solenoid. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how power is connected later, but first we are going to zoom in and look at the transistors. So this particular type of transistor is called an N-channel MOSFET. We are not really gonna get into the details of different types of transistors and what that means in this video. I'm just gonna show you how to use it. This type of transistor has three pins Going from left to right, we have the gate, the drain, and the source. So pins one, two, and three from left to right. The gate is the control pin. That is the one that you're going to connect to an I.O. pin on your Arduino. So I have that connected to Arduino pin two here. The source, the one on the far right, you are going to connect to ground. So I have a single jumper wire going from pin three to ground. And then the middle pin, the drain, has two connections. One is to the negative wire of your motor or solenoid, so that goes to the middle pin of the MOSFET here. And then the other is to something called a flyback diode. So this is a diode that is connected from the drain pin on the MOSFET up to the positive power supply that is powering your solenoid, so up to the positive 12 volts here. And again, we're not really gonna to get too deep into the physics of diodes or how they work or what they do in this video. I'm just gonna show you how to use it. Diodes only allow current to flow in one direction. That direction is indicated by a stripe on one end of the diode. And that stripe is pointed towards the positive power supply. And this diode is here because solenoids can create some pretty big voltage spikes when they rapidly turn on and off. And those voltage spikes can damage more sensitive electronics in your circuit like the transistor or your Arduino. So this diode helps suppress that voltage spike to help prevent 
damage to the other components in your circuit. So again, that strays a little more into heavy electrical engineering territory that we're not going to cover in a typical intro Arduino video like this. For small solenoids like this, you can probably get away without the diode and not actually cause any damage to your Arduino or your transistor, but it's good practice to have it there, again, going from the drain of your MOSFET up to the positive power supply so it is actually wired in parallel to your solenoid. Looking at the leads of the solenoid itself, I should have mentioned earlier that at least for this very tiny solenoid, these leads are very small and flexible and hard to push into a breadboard directly, so I have the spring clips to connect them to regular jumper wires, which then go to the breadboard. And the positive wire is going to my 12 volt power bus here, and the negative or ground wire is again going over to the drain pin of the MOSFET. Finally, we're going to talk about how we have power connected. So first we have our ground connection. So I have the ground pin on the Arduino going to the negative bus on the breadboard. And it is important to have your entire circuit connected to a common ground. So I have an additional jumper wire going from the ground bus on this side of the breadboard over to the ground bus on this side of the breadboard. And then that is in turn connected to the negative wire from my external 12 volt power supply. So again, common ground for the whole circuit, ground on the Arduino, connected to ground on the breadboard. Both breadboard ground buses are connected to each other and connected to ground from the external power supply. Then I have the positive 12 volt wire coming in from my external power supply, which is powering the power bus on this side of the breadboard, which is in turn powering the solenoid. It is important not to short circuit that external voltage to five volts from your Arduino. So I do not have anything in this particular example circuit that is using five volts from my Arduino, but many sensors, for example, might require five volts. So if I had five volts from my Arduino plugged into this power bus, I would not want a jumper wire connecting my two power buses or else that would mean I am shorting 12 volts directly to five volts and I'm potentially going to damage my Arduino. So again, it is important to remember this and this is a common mistake that a lot of beginners make. You do want a common ground, so you need that jumper wire connecting the ground buses on the two sides of the breadboard. You do not want to short circuit your positive voltages together when you have a circuit with external power supplies. So save one bus for five volts from your Arduino one bus for whatever your power supply is. Do not use a jumper wire to connect them. As for the code that's running here with this demonstration with the solenoid turning on and off, this is actually the exact same code you would use to blink an LED. It is just a loop with some delays, setting a digital pin high, having a delay, then setting the digital pin low, delay again, and looping through. So even though the hardware is different, we're controlling something completely different with a more complicated circuit, the code to turn this pin on and off is exactly the same as that standard simple introduction program you would use when first starting to learn an Arduino to blink an LED. Now, I know it might have been a little messy as I was pointing at all the wires on the breadboard here, so we are going to briefly switch over to the computer so you can see a cleaner view of the breadboard diagram. Switching over to the computer so you can see the circuit diagram a little more cleanly, I will again go through this part by part, but you can also find the link to this Tinkercad simulation in the description of this video. I will also quickly note that Tinkercad does not actually have a solenoid part in the library, so I am using a small vibration motor here to represent the connections, but the circuit is exactly the same. Zooming in, we first have the MOSFET, which again has three pins, the gate, drain, and source. The gate pin is connected to Arduino pin 2. The source is connected to ground, which is in turn connected to ground on the Arduino. And the drain pin has a diode with the stripe facing toward the positive voltage from my external power supply. And the drain pin is also connected to the negative wire of the motor or solenoid. The other wire of the motor or solenoid is also connected to the positive voltage from my external power supply, which you can see I have connected to the power bus here with the negative wire from the power supply, also connected to ground, and a jumper wire going over to the other ground bus, so I have a common ground for the whole circuit. But I did connect this five volt wire from the Arduino just to show what this would look like. Note how I do not have a jumper wire connecting the two positive power buses because that would be short circuiting the positive voltage supply to five volts from my Arduino and is potentially going to damage the Arduino. 
so you do not want that jumper wire. Quickly looking at the code, which is again very simple, this is pretty much identical to the code you would use to blink an LED. We just declare a variable for the solenoid pin, we set that pin as an output in the setup function, and then we use the digital write function and delays to set that pin high and low. So when we run the simulation, it will turn on for one second and off for one second and repeat. For the rest of our Arduino tutorial series, as well as science projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other fun projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.